Hello ladies, gentlemen and my fellow hunters. My name is Waggers and first and foremost I would like to apologise for the rendering issue on my previous video, as I didn't have my trusty editor with me ensuring I was doing everything correctly. Yes, I know AG, I should leave the techie stuff to you and the editing and the recording and everything else. Well, maybe not the recording, that is my bag. But then again, you are the better editor. But enough about that. Today I will be trying to convert many of you Longsword and Switch Axe mains over to the range side of Monster Hunter Rise. Please keep in mind that these are my personal opinions of this particular weapon, and why it's now a fantastic time to become a bow main with the upcoming free title update due to drop at the end of April. Now for all you returning veterans of the Monster Hunter series that know what the bow was lacking in the previous games such as the damage fall off due to range, trying to find that sweet spot to get the most damage possible and no fluid motion that usually comes with weapons like the longsword and the dual blades. Well now is the perfect time to get into one of the most underrated weapons of the Monster Hunter series which has now been improved vastly in Rise thanks to a number of new armor skills and due to the switch skill mechanic that has been added. Honestly, when I first started playing, I was intrigued by the hunting horn and how simplistic it was to try and buff your team, and I had well over a hundred hunts with the weapon before I even began to consider using the bow. And now look, as you can see, me soaring through the sky like a graceful supporting monster hunting machine. But that's not what you came here for, so let's get right into the top five reasons as to why you should drop your melee weapon and pick up the elusive bow. DPS versus high damage. Now the bow has an option of three different types of arrows, which include pierce, spread, and rapid, which I'm about to go through and you guys can see for yourselves. So pierce, it's kind of in the name. The arrows pierce through the monster, dealing an initial hit, and then two to three smaller damage numbers after, as you can obviously see. Now we're going to go into spread. Spread, each arrow does a set number of damage in an arc-like fashion, increasing with damage depending on charge. And now with rapid. Multiple arrows are fired together in a tight spread, and same as the spread type arrows, all do a set damage number. Almost all of the bows have a different type of shot that increase in power and arrow type depending on the charge level of the bow. There are however two exceptions. The Rampage Bow, which using one of the Rampage skills you can set which type of arrows you prefer. So you need to experiment with what works for you for the monster you are facing to deal the most amount of DPS possible. Now onto some of the techie stuff and a bit of the numbers. So the greatsword has a very high damage per hit compared to, say, the dual blades, which is a very low damage per hit. And this is where the DPS comes into play. Yes, the dual blades have a low damage number, but the sheer volume of hits within the same amount of time you can charge and attack with the greatsword, it almost equals the same amount of damage. Now, this also depends on the element of the weapon that you're using, depending on where you're hitting the monster, and all different kinds of factors, whether you're trying to deal critical hits, trying to go for raw damage, and bits and pieces like that. And that's also where the bow comes into play. So with the bow and the higher charge of arrows, the damage also increases. But this all depends on how many of your arrows actually hit the target, where you hit the target, whether you get a critical hit with one of the arrows, the elemental damage, and even the coating that you currently even have equipped on your bow. Now, this can come into a lot of different factors that make your hunting experience that much better. So, with the bow, you can get an extremely high amount of DPS very quickly, as long as you're accurate and you know where to aim. Are you one of those hunters that just can't time your dodges from the monster attacks? Do you car often? And do you wish you can support your fellow hunters without the fear of letting them down and at the same time looking pretty damn cool doing it? Well, that's where the bow also comes into play. You can now keep your distance even more from the monsters in Monster Hunter Rise and deal a lot of damage very quickly 
using one particular skill that I will highly encourage you have on your armor slots. It's Aim Booster. So Aim Booster was added into Monster Hunter Rise so you can keep your damage high from further away. Aim Booster comes in three different levels. So you can get level one, level two, and level three. So as you can see with level one, a little bit of a difference. Level two, a little bit more. And level three is where you can get the best results. So you always have that sweet spot from the monster, depending on where you are away from the monster. It really makes a huge difference. So it stops you getting damage from the monster. It keeps you dealing damage to the monster and it will stop you from carting. And also you can support your team with the number of different coatings that you can apply, the element that you can do. And also even depending on what arc shot you even have in your bow, but that comes up in a later one. So, yeah. Why do you have to get close to the monster? That will also come in one of my later reasons when we start to talk about the switch skills and what you can physically do with the bow at close range. So, stay tuned. As I was saying previously with support skills such as aim booster, the bow can have many different armor pieces, decorations and talismans to make that bow build that much better. Now these are some of my highly advised ones that you should really consider when attempting to have your bow build. So we can have Stamina Surge, Constitution, I've already mentioned Aim Booster but I'm going to reiterate, you definitely need Aim Booster, and Bow Charge Plus, although one bow doesn't need this, and I'll be showing that up right at the end of the video of my favourite bow. And it's currently the one I'm using in the background, so if you have noticed it, that's the one bow that doesn't need Bow Charge Plus. So that's more skills that you can build upon without having to worry about having Bow Charge Plus. Reload Speed. And finally, Spare Shot. Now there are a few honourable mentions that come with this, such as Weakness Exploit, Critical Boost, Critical Element, for all of you elemental bow users out there, critical eye, slugger, and lastly, the spread, pierce, and rapid boost, which all depend on what bow you are trying to use to get the specific boost out of. Now, I can see that some of you are wondering, why slugger? Well, with one of the switch skills, you can turn your power shot into absolute power shot, which adds a stunning effect to both of the A attacks after either shooting or charging your bow, and the other switch skill which is Aerial Aim, which makes all three of those attacks, if you use them, have a stunning effect during the entire animation that you're up in the air. Now reload speed is also very interesting, as you only need to go up to level 2 with it, it does have 3 but the third one makes no difference to the bow whatsoever, but if you have level 2 reload speed, it automatically allows you to apply your coating of your choice to the bow instantly. And if you're very skilled, you can change your coating during combos, which can rack up some very good damage numbers and different effects, and stops you having to waste that coating at that particular time. The only difference is you have to physically take off the coating, because as you're switching through, as you can see, it automatically just racks through all the coatings that you currently have in your inventory. And now we're possibly onto the longest and most interesting reason. So the supporting role that comes with bows. The bows have always been known for their elemental prowess as every arrow contains either an element or status depending on which coatings you can use with your specific bow. But that's also its downfall as well. Due to its high element damage, as we all know, not all monsters are weak to the same element. So if you do go down the elemental route, you will need to prepare your equipment loadouts accordingly for getting the best weaknesses against the monster you are either hunting or attempting to capture. Don't capture, just hunt. Honestly, just hunt. You don't need to capture, just hunt. But enough about that. So for status effects, not all bows can have all the status coatings, 
which include close range, power, poison, para, sleep, blast, and exhaust. Now I'm going to go into all the different ones and what they're capable of. So starting with close range, it increases damage at a closer range to the monsters. So you have higher raw damage, but you have to get a little bit closer. And that's also where aim booster shines. It increases the range of your close range coating. Now onto power coating. It just increases the overall damage that the bow can do, even more so than close range. So you can still maintain your distance at getting the highest damage output possible. Poison. It inflicts the poison status effect on the monster, slowly draining their health away over time. Same as a poison weapon, when you hit them consistently, they get poisoned. It's the same with the poison coating. Para. It inflicts paralysis on the monster, stopping them in their tracks, enabling all damage dealt to be increased on them for duration of the paralysis. So it's also useful in not using your shock or pitfall traps in order to capture the monsters. So you're still dealing damage at that point and you cause your team to deal even more damage. So I highly recommend getting paracoating if you can use it. Sleep. Sends the monsters to sleep, it's in the name, it's obvious. But when the monsters are asleep, the first initial attack deals increased damage, but it also wakes up the monster. So use your heavy hitter for when you're trying to wake up the monster, or even lay bombs. Bombs deal a significant amount of damage in this game, and you can use your arrows to stay away from the explosion. So you don't even need to use a small barrel bomb as such. Blast. Not sure why we have blast coating in this to be honest because with the rampage bow you can in fact have a blast element on it But blast is blast as more arrows hit the target you get an increased chance of dealing blast damage and we all know that's usually over the hundreds So depending on the strength of the bow the blast also deals even more damage Exhaust, which is a new one that has been added to Monster Hunter Rise. So it has the same effect as the skill Stamina Thief, which makes the monster exhausted and unable to take action. So you notice after about 5 to 10 minutes you're hunting a monster and you just see it panting for breath, trying to do anything, and it doesn't. So it just stands there bearing the brunt of all your attacks without the ability to move or fight back. Not as potent as Paralysis, as it doesn't add the increased damage, but it still adds up with the skill Stamina Thief to tire out the monster quicker, and activates more often than Paralysis Coating. Now we're going to get into the Arc Shots. Now, this has changed slightly since Monster Hunter World, so there are no longer Caltrops falling from the sky dealing stun damage, because you can already deal stun damage. But instead, you have these three. So you have Healing, Affinity, and Brace. Healing is possibly my favourite one at stopping your team from carting. There's three feints and you're done. That's pretty much it. But with Healing, it slowly heals your team over time as long as they touch the spores that fall from the sky for roughly 7 to 8 seconds. So they don't need to stay underneath it in order to get healed. They can just tap it, they're immediately healed consistently so they can get right back into the fight or you can even fire it at them while they're attacking it doesn't make that much of a difference now with affinity that's within the name it increases the affinity of you and your team now affinity increases your critical rate chance that you do critical damage on the monster and it works very very well with critical element weakness exploit and critical booster girls Especially with critical boost, because the higher affinity, higher damage, more crit chance, you're going to be dealing even more damage. So, if you try not to heal your team, and you actually have a decent team that is based around having a team healer, then affinity works just as well as trying to take down the monster that you're trying to. And now with possibly the weirdest one, which is Brace. Now, I don't really see other archers using the Brace mainly because you'd rather be dodging the attacks, trying not to take damage instead of bursting through them. I understand for some areas that it works, like with the Greatsword, but they have the Rage Slash, which encourages them to take damage, and they don't get knocked out anyway. So, 
It's just a few things to think about, really. Now we're on to the movement and attacks. Now the bow can be a very fast-paced weapon with three switch skills that can change your playstyle drastically if you know how to use them correctly. As you've all been watching in the clips that I've currently been playing in the background during this 5 Reasons Why video, you could be soaring like an eagle, raining down arrows upon your monster enemies in style. And that is really what we appreciate mostly about the Monster Hunter series, the style and grace that comes with using this weapon. So now we're going to go through some of the switch skills and silkbind attacks that I recommend you can use and practice. Practice and practice some more. The more practice that you get, getting used to aiming and firing at the target dummy in the training area, the more you use the silkbind attacks, the more DPS you'll be pumping out and helping your team. So the silkbind skills that I recommend you have are Hercu there, can't even say it, Herculean Draw and Aerial Aim. Now Herculean Draw, it takes up two of your wire bugs to increase damage for a set amount of time. It is very useful for pumping out damage numbers. Although the second skill is where the weapon really shines. So when you first start using the bow, and I recommend creating eight bows, you can either use the bone, the ore, or the Kimura set to ensure that you get the aerial aim. Now this stylish silkbind skill only takes one of your wire bugs, and it is an absolute delight to use and hone your skills as a bone main. Once you fling yourself upwards away from most of the monster's attacks, so things like Goss Harag and Rathian are still able to hit you while you're up there, most of the monsters can't. So after you fling yourself up, you automatically fire one string of arrows depending on what you've got, whether it's pierce, spread, or rapid. And you can follow that up with either two more shots or a diving arrow in which you fall straight down with an arrow in your hand driving it into the monster. But you can use... So you can either use the one shot and fling yourself straight down, two shots, fling yourself straight down, or all three shots. And if the monster is moving underneath you, I recommend you drag that arrow deep into its tail because you can cut it off. The arrows can cut off monster tails and break parts, which is fantastic. So not only can you stun, you can also cut off enemies' tails. But it's very, very unlikely that this will happen because you have to be right next to the monster and only tapping A to swing one arrow back and forth. Now onto the switch skills. So we've already covered one which changes your power draw to absolute power draw, which takes a little bit longer to fire, but you deal more damage and it comes with a stunning effect. We've already talked about the second switch skill, which is changing one of your silk binds from where you flip backwards and you regenerate stamina to the more useful aerial aim. And the third one, which I still really need to practice on personally, it changes how your dodging works. So in World, all we had was a, do a dodge that charged your bow by one level. It still does that. It still has a decent dodge and your arrows do charge up one level. But you can also change that to a different dodge, in which case you spin to either the left or the right with an arrow in hand dealing damage to a the monster. Now the only way this will charge is if you're dodging through a monster attack and also dealing damage, which does charge your bow. It's very different to try and get used to instead of the normal dodge, which is why I usually just stick to it because I'm used to using my arrows. I prefer to stay away from the target and pump out those damage numbers, only because I enjoy the DPS. I don't trust myself enough that much yet with this game, even though I have been practicing a lot and hopefully... I managed to get it within the next week or so just before the update kicks in. So in conclusion, what are you waiting for? Go and get some monster materials, build the bow that you want to test out, test out the high flying attacks, the amount of damage you can do and which elements and which ways to support your team, which will be fantastic not only for you but for everyone else on your hunting team. So what are you waiting for? Go! And one more thing. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to give a like and subscribe if you want to see more. It really does help out more than you think, and it's free. And we all love free things in this day and age. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.